Hello fellow YouTubers. Today, it's a couple days after Christmas. It's a little chilly in the garage. It's uh, December, so I have a hoodie on. Um, today, I'm going to work on my go-kart. I, um, I've been working on this thing for probably 10 years almost. Um, I designed the frame in college. I built it shortly after. It sat for a long time, work on it a little bit, sits for a long time, work on it a little bit, same old, same old. Other projects come up and this takes the back burner. So it does run, it's got a battery in it right now, so it will start up, but it doesn't have any brakes. So I haven't been able to fully test it because I'm scared of going out of control and crashing into stuff in my neighborhood. So um, I need to put the brake system here. I got a uh, hydraulic disc brake kit. And I'll explain why I got a hydraulic one instead of a manual one or a mechanical one with um, all kinds of levers and stuff. But as you can see, the um, axle is pretty rusted, so I have to take all this apart, and then I have to sand down that rust in order to slide the hub over, because the brake is going to go right here. But before I do that, I need to move some stuff around. Um, my welder is over there in the corner, so I need to pull the go-kart out a little bit, jack it up, take all the parts off, and then uh, I can install the new parts that I recently got. Got these a little bit before Christmas. It's got some nice stuff in there, so do that soon. I think the first thing to do is move some stuff around. So we'll uh, put our little toys over here somewhere. And we'll uh, back this up. This I built in uh, 2012. Started out as a Honda CB350. Chopped it all up and uh, turned into this. It is the most comfortable seating position of any bike I've ever built. It's fantastic. Um, next thing we need is gloves. a little bit jack it up this thing weighs like 500 million pounds or slightly less I think maybe I might be able to pick this up let's see oh no <laughs> so let's use the trusty jack I bought and bought, purchased several jacks in the last, you know, year, well, like five years. And this one is the only one that works. It is a 1956 Black Hawk. The thing is freaking amazing. It just always works. It's got an aluminum body. Um, it has a peg leg. It's missing a wheel. One of the wheels broke and it has a peg leg. But other than that, it works great. So we'll just jack up our go-kart here. I think we can get away with just one jack stand. The uh, front end is pretty stable. So. this back over here back in the corner so there we go so let's start taking it apart all right I'm gonna take this wheel off to the other side um if you don't have one of these these are the best tools ever made nearly the best it's an impact driver you put a socket tip on the end and you put a socket and you have lots of power. This Porter cable I got at Lowe's. Um, it's around 100 bucks. Um, it, uh, it has the highest uh, torque of any of the ones that I could find. It has like something like 1,368 inch pounds. Um, and a lot of the other ones I looked at only had a 700 or 800. So 
This one is uh, the way to go. I built sheds with it. I, you know, take my motorcycle apart with it. Everything. So it's a uh, fantastic machine. I don't know why I waited so long to get one. I should have gotten one years ago. But uh, I just got this last year, actually, last Christmas, actually. So. can uh, see everything on there without the wheels in the way so there's lots of locking collars on there there's bearings there's four bearings a bunch of locking collars a big sprocket I think it's a 52 yeah 52 tooth teeth or 52 teeth sprocket or tooth sprocket it's the biggest one I could find um, at the time when I purchased it probably five years ago it sat in a box forever um, so I need to add some more bracing, I think, maybe around here. I'll probably add a piece from here up to there just to give it a little bit more strength. But the thing probably weighs, you know, a million pounds. It's very heavy. Um, I have driven around in the driveway a little bit in the front yard. Um, it seems like it's geared properly. It It's going to go, I think. So it's a five-speed, 450cc Suzuki GS engine. Um, carbureted, of course, so electric start, good to go, so it should be fun. All right, so I've been about the last hour or so, um, sanding down the axle and sliding it to the left. And then once the end here cleared this bearing, I was able to slide this contraption on. This is the hub and the disc. Um, it seems like it's pretty good quality. I ordered it from uh, BMI Carts in Ohio, but the hardware it came with is kind of not correct. And these these bolts here, they don't go, they're not long enough to hit the nylon end of the locking nut. So therefore, it's not a locking nut if the bolt doesn't go through the whole nut to hit the nylon. So I'm probably going to have to swap those out, which isn't ideal of course and then the um caliper is here and this caliper comes with these long bolts and then it has these castle nuts and typically castle nuts you have a hole in the bolt to drive a cotter pin through so they don't come apart but this contraption is weird because you need to keep this nice and tight but then obviously your mounting point is here and they don't know what thickness of mounting point, so maybe you're supposed to drill your own holes. But it's pretty hard for an average garage do-it-yourselfer guy to drill a hole in the end of a threaded bolt. So I just think that's kind of weird. But once we get this done, it's going to sit here like this, a little bit towards the front. Sit there right like that. I'm going to run a plate along here. I'm going to weld it here, clear the axle, and then weld it down here again and maybe to the side again just to make sure it's really strong and secure and then i'm gonna run the pipes it um hydraulic system so it has these little plastic tubes and you run it and it's fairly flexible when it's warm it's pretty cold right now so it's pretty stiff i think the reason i chose a hydraulic system compared to a mechanical brake is because the brake pedal is on the left front and the caliper for the brake is in the middle rear and so if I would have used a mechanical system I would have had to have a jack shaft basically a rod that comes from the pedal to a jack shaft right behind the seat over to the right and then back and then another small jack shaft to the middle of the engine roughly and then have a rod to grab onto the end of the brake caliper and that would have just been a nightmare to engineer and to figure out and would add a whole bunch more extra weight, which I don't need. So I opted to spend more money and get the hydraulic system. Ultimately, I think it'll be better. Um, this is the first hydraulic system I've installed. So uh, we'll see how it goes. It looks pretty easy. Um, I'm also disappointed the system didn't come with a quarter inch 
um, keyway. You need a keyway, obviously, on here. And it didn't come with one, which I think is odd because it needs one. But I guess they think that you have one, so they're not going to install or they're not going to give you one. They want you to buy one. But um, I thought I had some, but I couldn't find any. So I wound up taking the one off of this hub over here. And I'll just uh, replace that later. It's a lot easier to replace than this, obviously. So um, I need to get that set up. So I did that. So now I'm going to move to the front and I guess uh, figure out my pedal situation. I ordered these pedals from BMI Carts as well and I got the brake set up. They were actually on sale for a uh, dollar each. They're uh, pretty, you know, heavy duty. I think they'll work perfectly. This is a inch right here. And the tube I use on my frame is an inch. So I'm just going to weld an extra tube section to the end of that. And my pedal will be right there. So my foot has a pivot point on that bar. And then I'll push the pedal like that. Should work out great. So then I'll just have to figure out how to mount my uh, master cylinder for the brakes. And I also need to figure out a way to hook up the cable because the motorcycle throttle ends right here. So I need to either replace this with a longer one or make some connection that goes from my right foot to the pedal here. And this is the uh, gear shifter, pulling the clutch, then go forward for downshifting and pull back for shifting up. And I got new front suspension not too long ago because the old suspension was not good, so this is better. It's off of an ATV, I forgot which one it was. And these are the uh, 25 inch tall tires, which are pretty badass. So, And I recently uh, padded the seat, so it's going to reset its seating. So you sit real low, because there is no roll bar. So that may be bad. <laughs> Let's see if it'll uh, kick over. Battery's still good. That's good. All right, so I'll do some welding and cutting, and I'll check back in later. Good morning, boys and girls. Today is January 1st, 2016. Happy New Year! On the last couple of days, I've been working on the go-kart. Well, really, just last night. Um... We had a few people over last night, and uh, before that, I was able to do some work to it. So what I did is in the front, mostly, I got these pedals from uh, BMI Carts. For both of them, they were on sale for a dollar. Can't beat that. And they're pretty much exactly what I need because they have a one-inch opening in the middle with a hole through it. So they will just weld a piece of one-inch square tube right here, and then drill a hole. Well, drill the hole first, then weld it on. And so this will be the gas, and this will be the brake. Um, I mounted the master cylinder for the hydraulic brake system here. And I just uh, welded two 3 8 inch bolts here. And um, actually the, uh, the unit came with two holes in it, so I just had to slide them through there. And then I, now I just need some um, bracket system to go from here to here. I went to Ace this morning and looked for a uh, ball socket that would go on the end of a threaded rod and go to here and then to here so it could pivot as you pull it but they didn't have one so I'm probably gonna have to order one um, I got clevis pins to replace these uh, these bolts here I like using the clevis pins because they're the same diameter all the way through uh, these bolts actually the um, the threaded part is a little bit thinner than the non-threaded part, so I like to use the clevis pins when I can. So I got some of those, so I'll put those in, and uh, then I'm going to figure out something to put right here. It's only about 8 inches long, so go from one of these holes, drill some holes in here, make a nice little pivot, then we'll have some brakes. When I was at uh, Ace, I stopped by and got there. I went and got some new hardware for these two. These are the original bolts here. And you can see that 
the bolt doesn't actually touch the nylon locking part which means it's not a locking nut and you kind of want a locking nut on these so they're clearly too short I think they're three quarters inch long and they need to be an inch so when I was the ace I got inch long bolts and you can see that they go all the way through the nylon nut um, I got new nuts too just to be sure um, they're cheap they're easy and this will ensure that the nut is actually a locking nut and the bolt won't, won't come loose which of course you don't want on your brake system so I got four new ones so I'm gonna switch those out um, there's two old ones and four new ones so I'll switch those out another thing that I think I'm gonna do is um if you've ever ridden a a go-kart with a locking live axle in the back or a live axle in the back that is you know fully locked you know that it's really hard to turn um, and so for now I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the keyway out of the axle here and I'm gonna leave the set screw out of it and so that will allow the tire to spin when the axle is not spinning um, this will allow me to turn a lot easier and then in the future I can put a locking keyway in there if I want and put that set screw back in there or I could uh, drill a hole through the hub and through the axle and then run like a, a grade 5 quarter inch bolt and that would be like a temporary lock so I could easily you know take it out put it back in take it out put it back in there would be a little bit of play and it would probably wear the axle out when it's not locked because it would spin but um I did put some grease in there to you know let it spin a little easier or to give it some type of lubrication there is a little bit of play just because you know it's not locked in there but eh, ultimately I don't think that's gonna be a big deal all right we're back up front now um, we're gonna put these new clevis pins in I took the uh, the bolt out that was in there and so now I'm sliding through on the clevis pin though I did put a washer on the back side it's always a good idea to put a washer on there distribute the weight or distribute the pressure um, if you only have this little tiny lip that's taking the, all the pressure, and that's not great. Just I feel like it's better to have a washer on there and distribute a little bit. And ultimately, that's what washers are for, is to distribute the pressure. So put one on this side too. And we'll put our cotter pin in there. And... Bend it up a little bit, just for now. Still a little bit loose, but I think that's better than a bolt. I mean, no binding, no anything. Nice and smooth. So now I'll do the other side, and then we'll uh, be done with that hardware part, and then we'll move on to the next section. All right, boys and girls. Uh, put this bar in here. It just has two holes, one quarter inch thick, or one quarter inch holes drilled into it exactly eight inches apart which is just what it turned out to be and I put some temporary locking washers on there with some nuts to uh, test it out um, this is temporary for me to fill this up and test it out and then ultimately I'll make another one of these out of thicker metal and use nylon locking washers or lock nylon locking nuts and the reason it's temporary is because I don't know, I've never used one of these uh, calipers before. And I don't know if they're, you know, if it doesn't engage until here. In that case, then I would want to drill the hole back here somewhere, move this lever up, and then it would basically be preloaded. So it wouldn't have to only push it about that far. Um, I also, you know, I don't want to have to push it all the way down to engage the brakes. I don't think that will be the case, but I don't know, so... Until I do, then this is just temporary. But it should hold up for a while. It's nice and smooth. Um, it, this has a built-in spring to it, and so there's no spring needed on the pedal. Um, all the spring return comes from this lever, and it's it's pretty good. So shouldn't be a problem at all. All right, boys and girls. Um, I mounted the rear caliper. I. Uh, Mounted it at the downward angle just because I thought it would be better. Um, 
And also I wanted the caliper close to the front because I don't know how long of uh, cables they give me. Um, you know, the tube that you have to run from here to the master cylinder in the front. And I didn't want to mount it back here or upside down or whatever because then it would have been further to go. So I mounted it there. Um, I just got a long bar and then an angle bar. And you can kind of see it comes up here. It's three different pieces. Um, this is the thickest piece, and then there's two thinner pieces here. It's still quarter inch, um, so I think it's going to be good. It'll be fine. It's nice and sturdy. Um, I did upgrade the hardware a little bit. I put a washer in here to distribute the force a little bit. And then if you remember, it came with castle nuts, which I thought were silly because there were no holes in the bolt. So the castle nuts pretty much are useless. So um, I happen to have a bin full of 3 8 inch hardware, so I just put a washer and then a locking washer and then a regular nut on it, and uh, that'll be good. So, and it rolls. Um, what I did is I, uh, I mounted it here. You know, I got it close as I could, and then right before to finalize everything, I unloosened this bolt here, and then I had to slide this whole unit over maybe a millimeter or a fraction of a millimeter just to make sure it was in the middle and I may do that again once I put fluid in it and pump it up and see how those pads come together they should come together you know the same distance and same pressure but you know who knows so I may do that again um, other than that I think it'd be fine so um, I think I'm gonna run the lines now um, it's pretty cold today it's uh, January 1st it's pretty cold in here and the, the lines that they give you are are pretty stiff they're not very pliable, so I have the line inside uh, getting warmed up. Um, you don't want like a, a hose or anything like a fuel line or something, because when you push on that pedal, you want the pressure, or you want that line to be able to take the pressure. And if the line swells, then you're not going to be able to stop, because you're not going to be able to apply the pressure to the caliper when you need it, and you're going to get in trouble. So um, I think I will be able to move that line and route it where I need to. Um, so that'll be the next step. What's up, people? So I uh, tried to run all the brake lines, and I ran out of brake line or brake tubing for the caliper. So I could only do one side of it. So I guess I can't test drive today. So I thought I'd sit in it, and try it out. through the body here, underneath the seat, on this side, and to the back, and then curls up around the rear axle. So, that should work. And there it is. So, if you're gonna do this yourself, um, you know, just take your time. Measure once measure a million times and cut once and uh, hopefully it comes out right I'm pretty happy with how this turned out I think it'll be fine I think it'll work fine and stop me when I need to stop so one step closer to driving